morning, time, greetings and blessings to everyone. Give thanks to life, health and strength. Our father, ever living, our mother, Black Madonna, Empire Celestia, King Emmanuel. Give thanks to Empress Amiga, Marcus Gabe Powers. Yeah, so this is the sea moss, you know. You see, we bring it out of the water after the sea, you notice it has the purple look. This is a raw, natural, organic sea moss. So we have to clean it up and then we go and prepare it. You know the preparation method. Basically just I prepare this for myself, you know. Anyone who pass by can get a drink. So it's just a basically like a handful. See? So what you don't know if you notice you can see the salt on it. White stuff. Salt. You can see the salt drop out on it. So you know, put it in a pot with some water. And clean it up. So I allow this to soak until about in the evening time. So I just wash it out, you eh? know. All of this stuff going so up. Take up little stuff that I don't want to have it. Like some of the seaweed to get caught. And then we go and come back up just like we came out of the sea. The fat. So all the reef, the rocks, them stuff there. We go and take them out. You know, cut them off. If you have a little scissors, kitchen scissors or a little knife, clean her up. Alright. And then when we wash her and get her clean, we leave her soap. We clean her up. And get it clean and we we'll wash her up a little bit more. Get the water to look clean because you know this is the sea water with the salt, you know. So if it's you no, know, this is too this is another type of sea moss, you know. They call it the spaghetti. You know, these are the original coarse ones. Yeah, so here we go again. Let's take another look at it, you know. Just a few minutes, just wanna show you how simple you see, all the pot is full with that little stuff. So the sea moss is like it's a life, it never dies. You know, each time water catch it, it always just come up. You know, because even if you put it back out to burn in the sun again. See, you see that little bit amount? Look, I put about this amount in the pot, you know. If so much. When I had it dry, it was, it was about this amount in the pot, right? And now you see how much it come up to be. So you can definitely see that, you know, it, it swells. Right? You see how it look? So these are the stuff I'm saying you have to clean up. Because... Your system never made to digest stones and rocks and stuff like that. You know. So you see like down at the root there. Understand? At the root. Uh, this is another type of sea moss I was talking about. This is what they call the flower sea moss. Alright. So I'm just showing you a slick thing of what really is. So look at it, where it goes, you see that? That's the rock, so you gotta cut off all these stuff. Clip them off, cut them off, you know? You can use your cutting board, you know? Or you can use a knife. You know, have a little dish cover here. So you know, just hold it, you know, because I have the phone in my hand. You can just hold it with one hand, and you will just cut it off like that. You understand? So you can get rid of the rock. See it? That's the reef. You know, throw that away. In the garbage. So any little stone is not normally what I do now. When I when I when I begin to clean the pond, I always take cut them up piece by piece, cut off the stones, cut off anything on it I don't want, and then I wash it. Another run of water or in a pot of water and then I put those to one side. So each time I trim or if I look and I see a piece that is it doesn't need trimming. And not all of them need trimming. You understand? The pieces that don't need trimming are just put it under the water and wash it. Extra salt come off. 
excess stone or sands and then basically this is how everything would be there now right and then I would when everything come out now the pot the sun, sun is in the bottom I can feel sun so I would rinse out the pot and after I rinse out the pot then I'll put the amount of water I want in it understand so this is the stage where I say you can squeeze the lime in it a lime or you say lemon you know and the juice will soften this is what the juice will soften the lime juice have a way to soften the seamers so when you pick up and you feel this stuff you get fat let me take up a fatter one so you can see all right when you touch this sometimes it feel even sticky i'm blending the seamers and i have mango i'll peel a mango and blend it with the juice the sour sap i will kind of peel the sour sap take out the seeds and blend it all right and then I would blend the sea moss with it. If you have beetroot, you know, how I do the beetroot, I'll just cut like a half of it and blend it in the sea moss. So I even use it, the, 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 the trash of the beetroot, you know, because you know what the substance is in the trash. You see, people call it the trash, but you know, the part that they blend and they, they juice and waste that part. So you can even use a juice extractor too. If it's carrot, you know, which the carrot is a hybrid food, you don't use it. You can use ginger, you can use a juicer to juice your ginger, and you blend your sea moss and you just pour the ginger juice inside of it and stir it so you have sea moss with ginger. You can do it with green smoothie, you know. You have moringa out there, you can see the moringas on the tree and so forth. You know, we just use the seeds of the moringa and the blossoms and the leaves and we blend it in the sea moss and make, you know, sea moss punch. We use peanuts. We use moringa, we use all nuts, you know, pumpkin seeds, care seeds, all these things. And blend it with uh, cinnamon, nutmeg, grater in it and so forth. You can use a hemp milk and spice up. It's, it's according to how you want it. Uh, when you boil it like that, you can just put it in your fridge and you can take a scoop when you're ready to blend whatever you want. Alright? So basically, that is it. Understand? So if you follow that preparation method, it will be simple. As I said, you soak it, you squeeze a lime in it, and soak it, clean it up, and you can blend that raw for your raw food. Those who want to cook it, you know, you put it on the pot with like, like this amount. Even this pot is too small for this amount. But I would boil this amount in, this, this amount of sea in that much amount of water. You understand? So the lime in it, it wouldn't take a long time to boil. Maybe by 10 minutes, you see it mush right out. So it break up in small pieces. So I just put that down to cool. Right? And then do what I want with it. You know? So it's a base. You know? You can use it for anything. Right? <laughs> you can put it in your food. Because sometimes when I'm boiling like fish soup and so forth, you know. I just take up like some sea mass like this. Put it on the board and cut it up fine and pour it in the soup. So it's like a vegetable soup with moringa and sea mass. I use I'm using fish, you know, to make my soup. All right. So basically, that is how you do it. So when I boil it, you will see. Here we yes, are. Sir. See, I have my my tambourine that I make with my sea mass at times. So this is the sea mass in the pot. You realize how thick it's together already? So you see, it's beginning to match to nothing. So I just put one lime, a small one also, because it's not the season here for a lime. And you see? So it's breaking down. So that amount of sea moss that was in this pot, as I said before, it could boil at least half of this pot. But I want my sea moss to be thick and rich so I can use a small amount because I have it at my disposal. Those who don't can extend it, stretch it out a little more. Yeah? So this is the final state. 